section 3.5 is an extension of the systems of equations with two variables that we did earlier. So now we have equations in three variables. And I'm going to put up for you an easier problem than this for us to start off with and we'll get into something harder. But you know how I like to give you specific steps that you can follow. So I want you to write these steps down so that as you're working through these problems tonight, you can go back and review. What do I do next? Because as I stand up here, I ask you the questions and it probes your brain and makes you think. But when you're sitting at home, nobody's there asking you the questions. So here you go. First, you are going to choose one variable to eliminate. And you're going to see this all come into play. Then you are going to group the first and second equation and eliminate the chosen variable. So if the three letters in the equations are A, B, and C, you'll just say, okay, I'm going to get rid of A. You group the first two, get rid of A. Whatever needs to be done. Remember in the process of elimination, that we can multiply any equation by something to make that happen. Then we're going to group the second and third equation from the original listing and eliminate the same variable again. And what you're going to create when you do that is a system with only two variables. So let's finish off our steps. Oh, I don't have my steps finished off. Okay. You're going to solve the new system that you've created with only two variables, the way we did in section 3.2. Most likely sticking with elimination, so you're not switching from substitution to elimination and making your brain do flip-flops. And then when you do that, you are going to find out what two of the letters exactly are equal to. So you will take those two values, you will substitute them back into any one of the original equations, and you will find your solution. Now what you're looking for when you're dealing with a system with three variables, now remember with two variables we said that there were lines that were intersecting and we were looking for the point of intersection, right? Well that was on an x-y axis where it was simply two-dimensional. Well when we're dealing with three-dimensional variables, We have an x-y axis, which we've always dealt with. Hurley, look, Parker, see? Okay? But we're adding into it a third dimension. There is another axis coming through, which is the z axis. So you have x, y, and z. So when we're dealing with a system of three, we have, some, we have three lines that are intersecting, and we're looking for those points. Where on the x-axis, where on the y-axis, and where on the z-axis are they all intersecting? Where do they all have the same point in common? So we're still trying to find a point of intersection, but now we're talking three-dimensional instead of simply two-dimensional. Okay. Let's actually work something. 
We are going to try to solve this system. God bless you. What we're looking for is a letter, excuse me, a number that x can be equal to, a single number that y can be equal to, and a single number that z can be equal to that makes all three of those equations true. Okay, now this one's simple. There's not much we're going to have to do to rearrange and make it happen, but that's why I'm starting simple. Step one was to choose a variable to eliminate. X, Y, or Z? Z. Z. Okay, we want to eliminate Z. All right, so we are going to group the first two. All right, which when you have these in your book, it's you won't have to write all three out. You can do it in steps. But I have to show you what the equation is. So I have X minus Y plus Z equals 2. And here... If I want to eliminate z, what do I have to do to this equation? <coughs> Multiply everything by a negative, which would make it negative x, negative y, negative z equals negative 6, right? Okay, well, this actually works out pretty good because not only do I eliminate z, I also eliminate x. not always going to work out this pretty. So I'm ready to solve for y. I can figure out right now what y is equal to. Divide both sides by a negative 2 and y is equal to what? y is equal to 2. Well since this worked out, no I can't do that yet. Never mind. Okay so we grouped our first two. Now we're going to group our second two equations and try to get rid of z. All right? We'll write in a different color so that we can see the change that's happening. So now I'm going to group these two equations. Now if you look at these two, we're already prepared to get rid of z, right? We have a positive and a negative, so there's nothing that needs to change. So I've got x plus y plus z equals 6, and I have x minus y minus z equals negative 4. I did something crazy. I'm not sure what. Oh, wow. Let's try this again. All right, well, when my z's go away, I have 2x. Oh, look, now I got rid of y also. Hey, that's convenient. Equals 2. So x equals 1. All right, and well, in this system that I created, we can skip the next step. The next step said to take our two new equations and use elimination to solve for x and y. Well, it worked out that we already solved for x and y. So if I know x and I know y, what can I do? The last step. Plug them both back into any one of the three original equations and then figure out what z is equal to. All right, so I'll just do the first one. If x is 1 and y is 2... then z is 3. So x is 1, y is 2, z is 3. You know what's nifty about these problems? You can very easily check yourself to see if you prefer